Hello, uh, in this video I'm going to be having a look at this uh, Baird 8940 VHS player from uh, about 1981. Um, it's a, uh, it's actually a rebadged model of uh, JVC HR7350. Um, it's got uh, Dolby noise reduction, linear stereo, um, it's standard play only, top loading video. Uh, it's got a couple of faults and we're going to see if we can work out what's up with it and uh, fix it. So first one, there's no, no uh, clock display here. Um, it's a vacuum fluorescent display in there, so we'll see what's what's going on with that. Um, the other problem, we'll see. I'll put a tape in. So it's never, it's not reaching end at loading cycle. It's, it's pulling tape out, and you can hear motor running, but it never, uh, the pin controller never engages. Um, you probably can't really see it very well. So I'll open. I'll take the lid off, I'll take the top off, and then uh, see what's actually happening inside. What should happen, two guide rollers will come out here, pull the tape out and wrap it around the heads, and then this pinch roller will click across and engage to pull tape through. We'll see what actually does happen. And there's guide rollers. The motor's still running. No pinch roller, it's disengaged and gone back to start. <coughs> what runs that entire operation is the loading motor, which is underneath underneath the the, uh, the deck and uh, that drives a that's got a belt and drives a uh, via a set of gears it drives these loading rings um, and there's a couple of switches and things underneath that tell the deck once it's reached certain positions in the cycle um, so we'll have a look underneath at this loading motor and see see what's happening from that angle Okay, so I'm thinking while I've got it open, uh, while I'm changing this belt, might as well uh, change all the belts, go through all procedure, and uh, show you how to do it, and then have a look at that, that BFD uh, display, see what's going on with that. Alright, just have a look at this board. That's, that's the luminance. 
that's the YC board but that's all single sided and got them wire looms all down here that's crazy that's the back side of it little jumper wire there I mean, it's pretty good how they managed to get it all single sided. I mean, there is loads of jumpers, but. You know. Pretty typical, like. Early 80s Japanese board that. Yeah, yeah pretty cool. Okay, so to get to Summit Belts, we're going to have to take this cassette compartment out. We'll have to do that now. Remove these screws. That's all the earth thing. It. it just lifts out. We've got two belts on this top side. Well, there's one here, see that? And then there's one, can't really see it, but it's attached to this pulley here, and then this pulley, and that runs that counter. Um, so, I'll take these off, these are easy enough to do. And by the way, these uh, this deck, it's uh, and the, this belt change procedure is the same for. Um, we got Ferguson Video Star 3v29, 3v30, um, JVC HR 7200, 7300, 7350. Um, there are other ones as well, I think. Uh, other rebadges. I mean they're British ones then just probably like there'll be other ones in uh, America and and that but they're all the same deck. I mean they're quite distinctive, easy to you know you can usually see if it's one of these by looking at it from outside. Um, but as soon as you open it up you'll you you know it's easily recognisable. So I'm gonna put this uh, this belt on, what I'm going to do actually is put it on this small pulley first I think Alright, this little one, I'll thread it through, there's a little gap under here, where you can see this pulley, I'll thread it through there, hook it onto that pulley from that side, and hook it onto there, that's easy enough. So that's the belts changed on that side. Now, what I'm going to do while I've got it this way up, before I turn it over, these, when you open, when you change loading uh, belt, you've got to take the loading motor out uh, and remove this uh, clip and stuff. But while 
what loading motors are, these are free to like move out of position. So you want to get you know either your old belt or a rubber band that capstan belt is probably the best one to use. Um but I can't be bothered to turn it over, undo that, turn it back again. So I've just got this rubber band here. I'll put that round there. Wrap it round this so it's tight and it's holding these back in position. So that when I take the loading motor out, these will these should hopefully not move. Your belts on this side, you've got Loading belt here, capstan belt with around this big flywheel, and this uh, take up one for the take up clutch here. Um, you have to take this bracket off. Release What I would recommend doing, which I'm not actually going to do in this video, uh, is clean these these pulleys when you change them, because chances are, if you know, if you if you get a say if you bought a, a second hand machine and it'll have been sat in storage for ages, and these belts will have, they can leave a residue. They sometimes turn into like a sort of gooey, like glue type, so they sort of melt really and get stuck to all pulleys and stuff. So you, you get it clean, but these are clean anyway because I did it not that long back really. And I've caught it before it, um, you know, before it turned to. To glue, put them on, put this bracket back, and then which way around it goes. Now, the loading motor. This is the hardest one a lot. And it seems to be the first one to go and all. So, the reason it's difficult is, uh, well, as I said, you've got to pull it out. Just take the motor out. I mean, all these, you could just, most of them, you can just put them on. But with this, you've got to take this whole assembly out. There's a screw there and a screw there. For one, these wiring looms are in way at screws, so you have to kind of push them out of the way while you're doing it. And then you've got to remove one of these clips to take. So you can get to the belt. Um, and also there's a risk a loading mechanism coming out of line. Which is you know, as I said, that's why I, uh, I put that belt on it on loading arms.
cuts it out. And if you can see here, you can see teeth of that welding mechanism. See them here. to make sure that they stay in line, they don't go out. Here's a close up view of this loading motor mechanism. If you can see this here, that's a little uh, C, C clip. Um, I think there might be a little little washer, little shim behind it. So all we've got to do is take that off um, and pull this out. Um, it's like pull that uh, that spindle out so we can take this cog out, remove the belt, put a new one on, put it back in, put that back on. Oh, without losing that little uh, tiny fiddly little thing there. So that's what we've got to try and do. I said we have got to try and do that. But if you're following this instruction to to change your loading belt, you'll have to do it as well. I think you can get a special tool for doing this, but I ain't got one. So. I'm just going to do it with a flat blade screwdriver. Get it behind it. Oh, there we are, got it. So what I did there, you can see. I poked my screwdriver into that hole and pushed it back. Like, that way. The opening's on this side. I pushed it away from the opening. Nice not lose that little shim. Like that can then lift out. Take that belt off. So put that around there. Line that up. Time 
this time. So I'll be honest doing this. more tension there and I have to try and get this clip back on so that can then lift out take that belt off Should give this one a clean just to be on the safe side of that, you know. Once I've gone to effort of getting it out, I might as well just get a bit of, bit of isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud. Too bad, it's not much dirt coming off it. That clean as well. Put that around there and line that up. Just 
slipped off. I end up getting grease all over your hands doing this. Belts crossed over. Yeah. A lot more tension there. and get this clip back on. easier to get it back on. So what I did, I just lined it up with that gap. Um, you can see it. Anyway, the gap in the in the C clip, I just lined up with that and I just pushed it on. It went on all right. <coughs> so we now need to put this back in. We are disturbing these teeth. Hopefully, it should be all right because we've uh, put that thing in.
see. Okay, I'll take these off and bolt off. Just put this uh, this thing back in temporarily. Make sure, make sure your eject button is out, but like in the out position. When you do this, you end up like not being able to eject it because it can get up behind it. Like look at that. You can see that tape saying that. Rewind it. So maybe that idler's going. If I take this out, shall we have? Rewind works. So we can, uh, if we cover, we've got these two optical sensors here. Um, and if we cover them up, we'll be able to trick it into thinking that, the, and press this button down just here, we can trick it into thinking that there's a tape in. And we can see operation. Without the tape in way, so you've got this optical. That's an optical sensor, and uh, another one here. They detect this light here. If you press that button down. The light comes on. It's so that machine knows. Uh, when it's got to end at tape. <coughs> so what we can do, press play. It's not play, it's just play. That idler there turns these reels, it'll switch, you know, over to this one or back to that one. So if I, if I press stop, So it is turning it, but there might not be enough traction to turn it with an actual tape in. It's turning it actually. Why has it left it out? No, it's not doing it that time. So it must be reasonably alright. So what I'll do is I'll just get a clean. I'll pull that out. Do trick for now, but you know. change eventually. Might have just got a bit of grease on it when I was changing things in. I might do actually. Set it playing.
No, it's not thing. It's not uh, turning now because it's wet. And it's alcohol. I'm doing. I'm just holding this cotton bud against that. Just here, clean. I'm wondering why it wouldn't rewind then, but it's because uh, that sensor's getting light in it. Yeah, it'll only turn so much because uh, the sensor that detects when this is turning, um, so it won't keep spinning if it if tape's not going round, it'll not. Like destroy tape or, or motor or whatever by trying to turn it when it won't turn. I don't know how good I spoke alcohol is for this rubber really but it'll do on this occasion. So that's just sort of decomposed rubber and how much of it's dirt, I don't know. But You can get this stuff for like renewing rubber that's quite good for things like this. Uh, it's for rollers on printers really, uh, but you can sometimes get a bit more life out of one of these idler tyres by using it. Um, yeah. You can like soak it in it, or you can just uh, put it on a cloth and run the thing. If it's you know, and just hold it to it. 
I mean with this you won't be able to really unless you keep that turning as well. I'm getting up a try with tape. go back to end because I'm not with that. <coughs> There's no it won't detect end because disabled them sensors. I think it's yeah pulled that back in properly. Okay when you uh, Trying to find a fault, something like this, first thing you generally would do is to check your voltages so that, you know, say if I knew what what rail this was supposed to be connected to, I'd go and check that and see if it's, you know, or I could check on here, check the pins, the, you know, the, uh, pins that are supposed to be power supply and see what I'm getting there. I'm not sure off the top of my head what which pins are the power supply for this. I mean I would think that it's probably there's these two ones at either end that are sort of separate from the rest. I don't know if you can see it very well from there but um, so off the top of my head I would think that they're power supply. Um, I can check that actually. See if we're getting anything on them. Don't know what voltage it's supposed to be. Um, which one is the, uh, the actual power supply? Which you know. Um, need an earth. I think this is a. Uh, Been like something fluctuating like what around one volt on there and same on here so there seems to be something going to it but um, yeah I don't know what I can do is uh, quite easily there's a load of fuses on the, this is the power supply board and there's a load of fuses on there, uh, <coughs> so I can check them, see if there's any blown fuses. 
if there is, replace them and then see what we get. Um, so I'll turn it off. I'll show you the fuses. There's a few fuses on here. Uh, there's one here. One here. One here. One here. Uh, one over here. I think that's it. Can't see any more. And if there's one down there or out, I can't see one. Um, so we'll just test all these. Okay. <laughs> Straight away. Found one. What's this? 315 milliamps. Don't think I've got one of them. That's alright. That's alright. Hands alright. That's alright. <coughs> so they're, uh, they're alright then. Apart from that 315 milliamp, and I ain't got any of them, but I have got another one of these videos, um, which I can borrow one out of to test. So I'll do that. Right. I borrowed a fuse out of, out of that other one, and uh, I'll test this actually just to make sure this is working. I mean, I could test this by bridging it, but I mean, if, if the fuse has gone, it might be. I mean, it could be just due to aging, you know, because this fuse looks pretty old. I mean, I have changed a couple of fuses in this before, um, and this looks like one of them. But it's either it's the original one, or it's an old one, they've all been changed at the same time, because they're, they're all the same with this pattern on them. This, uh, you know these stripes so uh, put a new one in turn it back on hey success it's a bit uneven this you see like that one's very bright and this these are faded but it's just aging you can revitalize these by um, I think gain I'm a there's game and I voltage or something but uh, I'm not gonna bother doing that because it's working. So it were just that fuse. <coughs> okay so all that's left now is to uh, put it back together. Um if you're looking at getting a uh, you know a vintage video recorder, a VHS, you know, top loader, I would definitely recommend these because I mean this or like a, a 3V30, 3V29 because um, they are pretty indestructible really um, you sh I've had what, one, two, three, four four of these, not this exact one but ones from that line um, I bought second hand and they've been you know not working and all I've had to do to get them going again is clean them up and change belts and you know the back in action um, belt kits are pretty easily available for them you know um, only one thing what I've not been able to get hold of which is uh, it's a bit of a funny design really that I'm not keen on um, is uh, is this? I can get into focus. This little wheel here, 
<coughs> it's supposed to have a tyre on it and uh, obviously taken off the uh, the thing there's like a little uh, it looks like a weather vane it spins round uh, it goes on there it spins round by the action of, of this uh, wheel when that comes up and it just it damps the mechanism uh, the eject mechanism makes it come up smoothly and slowly um, that tyre had just it disintegrated and got completely chewed by this cog here um, and I've not been able to find a source for them tyres um, so if, if anyone knows where to get them from at a, you know, a reasonable price or that's you know can get them to the UK or in the UK then you know I'd let me know because I'd love to get them. I've got one where the eject's still smooth, that tyre's not too bad but don't know how long it'll last. Other three they just go Dum! pop up like that you know. <coughs> so you have to be careful. Um. See much. That's what it does. We have that tire. I mean, the model before this, like the the original VHS machine, the piano key one, that just does that anyway. But the sudden uh, vibration, you you've got a, like a little filament bulb in here, that cassette lamp. It's not an LED. It's just normal light bulb. We'll have to put that earth lug in there. Um, yeah, it's just a, a filament, uh, you know, an incandescent bulb, and them sudden vibrations can break the bulb. They're not too difficult to replace as well. I mean, you can get hold of them, like the proper bulbs, but you can also you can just make one. Um, you get these uh, little light bulbs, um, which I think are for uh, the the for in dashboards of cars, um, but they're really, really, really cheap. Um, you know, you get like ten of them for a pound or whatever, and you get a couple of packs of them, and you just have to detach that and solder it onto wires. Um, I'll probably put like a little bit of tape under it to stop it short into that chassis to that you know this uh, plate here but you know I replaced ones with that before um, don't know that might be one actually I'm not sure off the top of my head but There's also you can convert it to LED. You just need LED and a you know a resistor, and you can do that. Obviously designed to be uh, serviced these. Service manual for it's uh, brilliant as well. 
it. Tells you more or less everything you need to know. That lamp that I was talking about, by the way, is uh, if that if that lamp goes, the deck it'll turn on, but you won't get any operation. No, you know you press play or all like that, nothing will happen. Um, it's like a safety thing. So if if you get in that condition, that's what I'd check is that uh, check cassette lamp because they do tend to go. Do what else they're good for. Um, if you've got a tape that's like been stored for ages, um, and it's been stored like you know, not rewound or it's like half, you know halfway through tape where it position that it's been in where it's been stored, because um, they don't wrap the tape around the heads when when they rewind. Give him a, a few goes, put it in, fast forward it to end, rewind it uh, before you actually play it tape. Make sure it's uh, got an even tension all the way through, repack it. Um, so they're good for that as well. I'm not sure if these have got uh, no macro vision, like immune to macro vision or not. I know ones before it are. Uh, I'm not tested it with these. So if you were, I mean, someone might be able to say for certain. But that's, you know, if you're uh, if you're trying to transfer a tape to to DVD or to capture it to a PC or something. Um, one of these, if it's got macro vision, one of these old uh, video recorders doesn't affect it. So you'd be able to transfer your tape without problems. But I'm not sure if, I think this one is immune to it, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. Certain, but not one before piano key one definitely is. I'm going to see what uh, see what picture quality is like on on it. One thing with these videos, there's no scar or out on them. Um, they use. Uh, for video we've got BNC connectors and uh, audio is a DIN, it's this uh, 5 pin DIN 